Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to crochet this dream catcher. For this project you will need a 2.5mm crochet hook, a stitch marker, 6 inch metal ring which I got from eBay and double knitting yarn and optional of wooden beads, mine are 12mm. We are going to start this project with a magic ring. And then we're going to make chain two and into the magic ring we are going to place 12 double crochets. You do not have to use a stitch marker but I use one because it's easier to find my stitch when I need to slip stitch at the end of the round. So again make 12 double crochets into the magic ring. When you've finished your round, pull on the tail to, to close the ring and place a slip stitch in the first double crochet of the round. Round two, we're going to start with chain two and into the same stitch we'll be placing three partial double crochets. So you yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop Yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, go into the stitch again, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and do that one more time. Yarn over, into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two loops, and then you'll have four loops on your hook. One, two, three, four. Yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook, and make a chain to close the petal. And then we're going to make another chain for a gap. And that's the first petal. And then the second petal we're going to repeat all the way around. We're going to do the same, but we're going to do it four times. So you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, into the stitch, yarn over, pull through two loops. Again, yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pull through two loops, and for the fourth time, yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now you will have five loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all five loops, then make a chain to close the petal, and then one more chain for the gap. So we'll have a chain one in between each petal and you will end up with 12 petals all around. I will leave it in slow motion one more time so you can see and then I'll finish this round off camera. Five loops on your hook. Pull through all five, chain one to close, and chain one for the gap. Repeat this all around for a total of 12 petals. When you finish the round, slip stitch into the first chain gap. Round three, we'll start with chain one. And then we're going to place four single crochets in each of the chain one gap all the way around. And in this round, we're going to finish with 48 single crochets. When you finish the round, place a slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round. Round four, we're going to chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and that's going to class as the first double crochet and chain two. And you can place your stitch marker into the third uh, chain. That's where you're going to slip stitch, and then we're going to place a double crochet into the same stitch.
and then we're going to skip two stitches and place a double crochet into the next one then chain two and then another double crochet into the same stitch so this is going to be a pattern all the way around skip two stitches double crochet into the next chain two and then another double crochet into the same stitch when you finish the round place a slip stitch into the third chain that you've made at the beginning now round five we're going to start with a chain one then we are going to place three single crochets into the v-space and then one single crochet into the upside down v-space and you're going to repeat this all the way around three single crochet into the v-space and one single crochet into the upside down v-space and at the end of the, this round, sorry, you should have 64 single crochets. When you finish the round, slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round. Then we're going to place a slip stitch into the next three stitches. So we get to the next upside down V space, the single crochet above it. And then we're going to chain five. Then we're going to place a slip stitch into the single crochet above the upside down V. And then we're going to chain five again. And then slip stitch into the next upside down V. And this is, you're going to repeat this all the way around. And you are going to end up with 16 little gaps. When you finish the round, you are going to place a slip stitch at the beginning of the round where the first chain five starts. Then we are going to place a slip stitch, chain one, and then another slip stitch. So we get to the middle of the next space. Chain one, slip stitch. There we go. Now we are going to make another round of chains. So chain five, that's one, two, three, four, five, and then slip stitch into the next space. And then you're going to repeat this all the way around. Place your stitch marker if you need it. And then chain five again, one, two, three, four, five and slip stitch into the next space. When you finish this round, slip stitch to the beginning of the round. Round eight, we're going to start with a slip stitch into the next space. And then we're going to place a single crochet and place your stitch marker if you need. And it's going to be repeated pattern in each space around. So continue with half double crochet and then a double crochet, chain one, and then backwards double crochet, half double crochet and a single crochet and then do the same on the next space single crochet half double crochet double crochet chain one backwards now double crochet half double crochet and a single crochet and repeat this all the way around for a total of 16 little waves which will turn into 
triangles when we attach them to the ring. So I'll repeat this one more time. Single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, half double crochet, and a single crochet. When you finish this round, place a slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round, and then slip stitch until you get to the um, chain one gap. So that's three slip stitches. And then we're going to take the ring and bring it from the top of the project that the um, yarn comes from, comes from behind it. And you're going to want to have a space between the project and the ring. So when you pull on it, it stretches out and you don't have like a floppy project. And then make a slip stitch onto the ring. And then you're going to chain one. And place seven single crochets onto the ring itself. And then you're going to place a single crochet into the chain one gap on the next little bump wave. Then we're going to repeat this all the way around seven single crochets onto the ring and then single crochet into the chain one space on the next um, wave. And as you're working around, you go, you, you're going to have to stretch it and you might have to um, manipulate the stitches around on the ring a little bit, like move them around a little. And when you're finished, we are going to place a slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round. And your stitches might rise up a little bit to the um, top. So... All you need to do is just push them around and then we'll straighten out. Now we're going to make the uh, hanging loop. So we're simply going to chain 10. Then we're going to slip stitch back down into the same stitch. Then pull your yarn through and cut yourself a little tail to weave in. Now you can take your tapestry needle and bring your tail back through the stitch to the back of the project. And you can either weave it on the side next to the ring or you can bring it uh, back down into the first triangle below it and then go backwards and forwards behind the stitches a little bit and then do the same on the other tail from the beginning Now, if you want, this is totally optional. You can, if you can see, you can see the fibers of the um, yarn. You can take a lighter and very, very carefully with um, fast movements, 
um, you can burn those little fibers so it looks a little bit neater. So you literally just turn the lighter on and just go over it and it will burn the little hairs that poke out and you can go all the way around on the front and on the back. Don't, don't get stuck on one point because you might leave a burn mark. And this is the actual speed I'm doing it at. It's not um, sped up or anything. So just make sure you're not hovering. Just do it fast. And then you can do it on the back, on the back of the project as well. And for this side, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. And if you have a look, you can see that there are fewer fibers left. So he makes it look a bit neater and in my opinion it looks better. So now we're going to make the tassels. This box that I'm using is about 10 centimeters wide. Um, I'm simply going to wrap the yarn around it about 10 times. Then I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to cut myself two tails. One I am going to use for the top. I'm going to use my crochet hook to pass it through, thread it through, and then I'm going to make two simple knots. And then I'm going to cut the yarn on the other side in the middle. And then I'm going to use the second tail that I've cut to make the little bobble at the top of the tassel with two um, knots again. And if you notice the second time that you tie it, one strand will go upwards and one strand will go downwards. I am only going to cut the strand that goes upwards and then make two more. Ta -da, now you have three. And I am going to add uh, two wooden beads, which is entirely up to you if you want to add them or not. It looks beautiful without it as well. So I'm just going to thread the two beads and going to attach it onto the dream catcher. We're going to count backwards um, the triangles and we want the one right below it. So if you count it in twos, you'll find the middle one. Thread it through and take one of the ends out of the needle and take it through another stitch and tie those two little ends together with a double knot. You can make it as long or as short as you want, it, it's up to you. And then I'm going to cut the tails off. And I'm going to do the same with the two other tassels. Thread the beads on. And this one is going to go on. We're skipping one triangle and going to attach it to the one next to it. So there'll be a triangle gap. I'm going to thread it through. Take one of the tails out the needle. Thread it through another stitch. Tie the two ends together and cut them off. And then you're going to repeat that with the last tassel. Just remember to um, turn the project round the other way. And skip a triangle. And attach it to the one next to it. And now I'm just going to cut the tassel straight. You can also do that when it's on the wall so you can see it better. And that's it. This comes out so beautiful. I love this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.